Hello in England, we're going to do some more of these art books. These books here are from the large set of art books by Express Group. So it's an, an Express art book. And we bought a lot of these. We bought 16 off one vendor in England for £39. The post is £9. So you can see a couple of pounds each. They're a remarkable value. They're large size, they're large format. They have very good, good plates and they have fairly lightweight Easy, to, easy to, to digest text. So we'll start with this one here, French painting. Because it's not titled with an artist, it will have a, a number of different artists in it. So I'm just going to have a give you a quick summary and my own opinion. So we're straight into some heavyweight art at the Louvre. And immediately it's a medieval, straight up to Pompadour, which is George III in English. She liked pink, apparently. We have some Christian art, which is medieval again. And I can see in here a lot of different artists mentioned. Beautiful stuff. Excuse my finger. The Pilgrims of Emmaus by Louis Lenain, 1648, died. Georges de la Tour, St. Joseph the Carpenter. I would say that's got Caravaggio style flesh in it. Nicolas Poussin, Holy Family on the Steps. He did some, a lot of classical regurgitations. I mean, it looks Italian in a way, but it's a French painting on this occasion. Cloud La Reine. This is one of the kings, I would have thought. Louis X1V, Louis XIV. So we've got fleur de lis everywhere. We've got a stole with white ermine and mink. We have a wig in black. And it's rather over the top. He has six stockings on with two gold garters, a crown, a gold sword. Jean Antoine Watteau. Jean Simeon Chardin, blowing bubbles, 1699 to 1779. This is going to be uh, Venus with Cupid, with a cherub with two wings. Francois Boucher, Venus consoling love. So we have uh, Cupid with a bunch of arrows, which is called a quiver. This one here, Jacques Louis David, The Death of Socrates, 1787. I would have guessed Italian if I just, just looked at it. Same as this one here, Jean Auguste Dominique Ingres, a Orientalist headgear, a fan made of ostrich feathers. A pipe. Later. Jean Baptiste Camille Corot, woman in reading. Okay, so there's a. I don't really know how to react to that selection, to be quite frank. There's a lot of variety there. Classical pictures leading to, towards the Victorian era. Um, but beautiful things, obviously. Are they tasteful things? Are they nice things? I don't know, I'm not so sure. We'll now go to a comparable book called British Painting. So Joshua Reynolds, The Three Graces, 
adorning a term of hymen. So the three graces are not standing together like normal, like they would with Titian or uh, Canova. And I had a quick look earlier on, and this this painting, for example, here, it's an English picture, um, but it looks the Pope, the, the way he's standing looks Spanish to me, and this piece called looks sort of Spanish, the amount of gold and colour. It's an English painting, but it's got these imported elements, which is why I'm not so keen on it. It's a sort of universal European language painting of royalty. It's Henry Frederick, Prince of Wales, 1603. The, tone, the skin on the woman is pale, with a greyhound, stockings, a, a heraldic device. This one here, William Hogarth, who did lots of engravings and other things. That's a sort of dining scene, pub scene, with the females lying around. He was a social commentator in pictures, really. The Rake's Progress, Orgy, 1730. He did lots of pub, pub scenes and things like that. This one here is Joshua Reynolds. Because costume in France, England and America was a similar, that could, could have just as easily been George Washington or a French prince or an Austrian prince or a... English, Scottish, Irish, landowner, farmer. Um, I think actually looking at it as a sword, as a soldier. Colonel George, Cusemaker. So um, it's anonymous because it doesn't relate to England particularly. It's a furnishings picture which would have been painted for the family of this person or him or his unit perhaps could have been made by the garrison and presented to him. So, sort, of a, sort of a court painting. I don't think it's necessarily an English painting other than the fact it's painted by an English person of an English individual, but its pedigree is not English, I would say. A lot of people disagree with me. Same as this one. It doesn't look English. I know it's by Gainsborough, I think. Gainsborough. But it looks French. It's mimicking the mood in France of this over-the-top clothing, lace, handkerchiefs, stockings, buckles, ostrich feathers, rib ribbons. 1785. This is a very interesting picture, which I would say is English, English. William Blake. So he, he wrote the song the words to the song Jerusalem, which is the, num the number one English song apart from the National Anthem. And the song talks about how Jesus came to England with Joseph of Arimathea, Aram Aramathea, who was a traveller to England frequently. Um, and he was sort of anti-establishment and he was trying to reinforce the church in England, it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily the Catholic Church or the Protestant Church, he was just trying to reinforce the fact the church was, was in England and he did lots of pictures about religion, which are fresh. And he wrote these, these, these poems and songs. This one is another one I dislike, it is anonymous. I've seen pictures in Canada like that. I've seen pictures in America, France, Wales, Scotland like that. It's, it's an English painting, but it's not telling us about England anything interesting. There is a river, there is a fisherman. This is another Frenchy one. Thomas Lawrence, it's flouncy. It's over the top. It is a sort of one size fits all background. 
I mean, it's a spectacular picture and it would have, would have been a huge picture. 94 inches by 57 inches. But it doesn't mean anything. It's like a photograph of an individual or a portrait of an individual. Another one, same. John Julius Angerstein and his wife, 1790. So this is after the American War of Independence and you have this costume they were all wearing. It, says, it, it tells us nothing at all. Boring. This is a, uh, oh, this is Versailles. View at Versailles, 1826. An English painter working in France, which is not uncommon, in fact, very common. And this is the overlap, which is annoying because I want to look for English, English, not English, French things. That's Constable. Fairly ordinary, I would say. Constable Haywain, one of many depictions of the same scene. This is um, Turner fighting Temerere. Temerere. This is a galleon being pulled by a steam fired paddle steamer. And the, the last picture is another Turner. Titled Snowstorm 1842. Some people say he influenced the Impressionists, paved the way for the Impressionists. You can see that in the sunset, for example. So, an interesting selection of English paintings, which was put together in 1960, 1958. Um, this is sort of stuff the older generation of people like. My father was an antiques dealer, and this is the stuff he would understand and go after but I would hate to have that in my house. That's these sort of ordinary ones here. And I can't help but think, I know they're not French, but I can't help but think they're French. These ones with all of the French in pedigree, all these nonsense, nonsense paintings. Okay, thank you.